Okay, in this video we're going to be multiplying decimals. So if you go back to your two previous videos on adding and subtracting decimals, the trick when you're adding and subtracting decimals was lining up your decimal place vertically. When you're multiplying decimals, however, you don't have to do this. So let's take a look at an example. 25.1 times 3.21. Let's try to multiply those two decimals. The first step is multiplying these two numbers and just ignoring that the decimals are even there. So, the way we would multiply these two numbers is we would line them up like that and we would multiply. Now just ignore that the decimal point is even there. So, uh, if you're multiplying this, you multiply the 1 times the 1, the 5, and the 2. You have a space holder, you know how to multiply these numbers. Two space holders. Multiply the 3 through, carry the 1, and hopefully, hopefully that's right. <clears throat> okay, now if we're going to complete this multiplication of 251 times 321, uh, what we have to do with that? So just add all these numbers up. And it looks like what we have so far is this. We have 251, notice we're ignoring the decimal point, 251 times 321 equals 80,671. That's what we have so far. So that was the first step, ignoring the decimals. Now, in the second step, what we have to do is bring back the decimals. And the key is this. There have to be the same number of digits to the right of the decimal point in the answer as there are in the two things that we just multiplied. So that might sound kind of funny. Let's, let me demonstrate. In the 25.1, there's one digit to the right of the decimal place. In the 3.21, there's one, two digits to the right of the decimal place. So we have a total of three digits to the right of decimal places in the two numbers that we just multiplied. What that means is we have to have three digits to the right of the decimal place in our answer. So we count one, two, three digits, we put a decimal place right in there. So 25.1 times 3.21 equals 80.671. That is our answer. How about an example that you can do? So all we need for examples of uh, when we might multiply decimals would be um, my gas station receipt from this morning here. So, I'm going to round a little bit, but let's say um, that I fill up my gas tank with 9.5, well, 9.6 gallons of gas. This is our example. We have 9.6 gallons of gas that we're filling my car with. And the cost per gallon when I round is uh, three $3.78 dollar, $3 per gallon. Now, uh, if we want the total cost of this fill up for me this morning, uh, what we can do is just multiply these two numbers. If you want a little bit more explanation of why we can just multiply these two numbers, uh, you want to look at the units. Think of, think of the units on these numbers. Uh, we have 9.6 gallons. We have $3.78 per gallon. Now, if I, we want our answer to be in dollars, then what we can do is just multiply these two numbers, 9.6 gallons times 3.78 dollars per gallon, what happens is the gallon here in the numerator cancels with the gallon there in uh, the denominator, and what we're left with is 9.6 times 3.78, and the units on that is our dollars. So this is kind of like a word problem, I snuck it in there. Um, so anyway, this morning I put 9.6 gallons of gas in my car cost per gallon was $3.78 per gallon. If we want the total cost, we just multiply those two numbers. So let's do it. So the final
problem that we want to do here is we want to multiply 9.6 times 3.78. Why don't you give that a shot on your own? Hit pause on the video and come back and see if you got it right. Okay, let's see if we can multiply these two numbers. Uh, now we could do this uh, more than one way, but the way I usually like to multiply my numbers is I like to put the one with the most digits on top. We want to multiply those two decimals by each other. Remember again, the first step is ignoring that the decimals are even there. So let's multiply 378 times 96 and see what we get. We'll worry about the decimals later. So let's see, 6 times 8 is 48. Uh, 7 times 6 is 42, plus 6 is 46. Hoping I don't mess this up. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18, plus 4 is 22. Okay, now we need to go to the 9. We have a space holder. 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 7 is 63, plus 7 is 70. Carry the 7. 3 times 9 is 27, plus 7 is 34. To finish the multiplication, we just add those two numbers up. 6 plus 2 is 8, 2 plus 0, 2 plus 4. Okay, so what we have so far, 378 times 96, ignoring the decimals, is 36,288. We have some decimals, so let's bring them back in now. What we do is we count the decimal, the digits to the right of the decimal in the original problem, in the multiplication. It looks like we have three digits to the right of decimal places in the problem. That means we need three digits to the right of our decimal places in the answer. So we count one, two, three digits, and we put a decimal place in there. The answer to this problem, of course, is going to be in dollars. This is, we're asking how much did I pay for my gas this morning. Uh, so we're going to round this to the nearest cent, which means we're going to round to $36.29. That's how much did I pay for my gas this morning. All right, great. So that's it for multiplying decimals. Um, come back, and we're going to do some division of decimals in the next video.